Hey friends, welcome back to your latest episode of Hot News. We got some good AMD details, Intel details, Bitcoin details, including the fact that people got paid back a lot of money. Let's get into that after we talk about today's episode sponsor, which is ButcherBox. This is the last time I'm gonna be able to offer you free bacon for life because that promo ends on the 24th. And yes, I did say free bacon. When you sign up using our link in the video description of ButcherBox, you can get free bacon for every single order that you get from ButcherBox. And ButcherBox is the way that us at my house sold to actually get all of our meat every single month because they offer high quality meat that's 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, heritage breed pork and wild caught seafood at a great value. Not only do you have high quality meat, but it's less than $6 per meal and shipping is always free, which means we don't have to think about picking it up at the store. We just know that we're going to have high quality meat delivered to straight to our door. So if you want to check out Book Your Box, you can do so at the link in the video description. And as a reminder, again, free bacon for the life time of your membership if you check out Butcher Box. You can choose various different plans of different types of meats that you want, whether it's beef and chicken, beef and pork, all beef mixed, or just make your own custom box. You can do so. So check it out at the link in the video description. Now let's get into AMD news because that's what you're here for. Not bacon, but AMD is looking like a wild hog of performance in good ways. We have new benchmarks coming out of the Ryzen 7 5800H mobile system, and it looks like it's going to be beating the previous ones by about about 23% in single threaded performance, which means that it probably beats the M1 chip at that point, which is just really, really good that AMD is seeing this year on year increase. The 5800H is gonna be based on the Zen 3 architecture and it looks like it's gonna be pretty good. The only interesting thing that's happening in this benchmark as well as other benchmarks I've seen from the Ryzen 5000 series, the multi-threaded performance is worse. So we don't actually have an explanation of what's going on there, uh, especially this article just says that it's not the final product, so we'll have to wait and see but this is multiple times that I've seen this happen. So we'll have to wait and see until these are actually out to see if AMD is doing something weird on the multi-threaded end to actually get the performance in a good place on the single-threaded, but it does look really, really good on single-threaded performance, as well as really good on multi-threaded. It's just not that, it's not 23% higher year on year. Speaking of year on year, Intel 500 series motherboards apparently are allegedly going to be arriving on January 11th. So your Z590s, your B560s, and your H510s, which are gonna be part of the 11th gen lineup of processors likely will be dropping in January, which coincides with the CES announcement that's going to be happening. Not to worry, it does appear that whatever chips they're launching for this, the 11th gen will still be supported on Z490, but there will be updates that are going to happen to the 500 series motherboards that will make it makes sense and will likely still have DDR4 so you don't necessarily have to upgrade to another board for DDR5 in some time in the near future. But we also have some Intel GPU benchmarks popping up with 128 execution units, three gigabytes of VRAM. It's been tested in Geekbench. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. It doesn't look like this is a massively powerful card. This still appears to be very low end and likely may indeed just be laptop oriented. We'll have to find out again as Intel gives us more details. But Gscale gave us some details on their brand new lineup of AIO liquid coolers, their N key series of AIOs, which will have availability in 2021, coming in 240, 280, and 360 millimeter varieties. You can watch a promotional video by them here, but it turns out that this is actually not going to be made by Asetech. They actually are working with some other company to make these pumps. So a non Asetech branded new pump that's coming out. The G Skill logo looks pretty good. Kind of sad that it's just, you know, one set of RGB and not like an infinity mirror, but I, I personally prefer the new Fantex AIOs that got announced to these G-Scales, but it's another option that's on the market. And the options that you should be exercising on the market apparently is Bitcoin because it's still continuing to do a pretty nice upward trajectory on Friday. It passed 23,000 US dollars. And currently as of filming, it's sitting at 22.8, which is still a pretty penny. Speaking of pretty pennies, NiceHash, which got hacked in 2017, which for, I believe it was around 5,000 Bitcoin, 4,000 640 according to the CEO letter. They paid that completely off uh, as of last week, December 16th, NiceHash paid off all of the Bitcoin that they had owed to their customers that had gotten completely hacked, which is really intriguing that it's happening when Bitcoin's booming again, that they're making that happen. And it's kind of weird to see how they've done it. But four years later, they paid off a $55 million worth of Bitcoin. Kudos to them. Not, not, not a bad move. 
They kept their word and they did it. Now let's transition to Robinhood because when I think of Robinhood, I honestly just think of like Bitcoin bros. I don't know why that's my association with them. Well, the SEC is associating them with a $65 million fine for allegedly misleading users with how they're trading application because they didn't disclose payments that they received from market makers to execute the services trades. And this has to do with some ways that they were executing the trades that's not illegal, but just wasn't actually confirmed to the end user. And therefore they're getting fined by the SEC for that. But MIT is not getting fined for this because they're making everything run on time because they have uh, found a way that they can make a more accurate atomic clock. I'm so sorry for that pun. I will, uh, you know, just get back to not making them. And I hope that Epic Games gets back to games because apparently now Spotify is available in the Epic Games store for whatever reason. I okay, I'll just download it as a standalone app. Why do I have to download it through a launcher? I don't, I honestly don't understand this move. Anyways, Epic Games is giving away free games though, and you can get a $10 coupon, unlimited $10 coupons that you can apply towards video games. And here is a leaked list of the games that are supposed to be coming out. Most of the ones on here have been confirmed already. So if you're curious about what should be coming out in the future with regards to the Epic Game Store free giveaway, there you go. That's the list right there. And Death Stranding on PC is getting some cyberpunk integration with missions and gear from from Cyberpunk 2077, joining the PC version of Death Stranding, in case you're at all interested. Hades, adding cross-save functionality between the PC and the Nintendo Switch, which is absolutely great because this is a game that, a roguelite that should absolutely be played on the Nintendo Switch. It's a very much on-the-go game, so having the ability to play it on your PC, play it 120 FPS, but then play it 60 FPS on the go is a good move, and Nintendo seems to think that a good move when it comes to the Nintendo Switch Pro is you gotta keep the form factor exactly the same with Doug Bowser, the American president of Nintendo, saying that it's really the form factor of the Switch that makes everything work. That's what's giving them their momentum. And so they're not going to change that, even if that would mean that they're missing out on otherwise great performance that they could possibly have. Now, this isn't a confirmation of a Switch Pro. It's just indication that they are very much prioritizing the way the Nintendo Switch feels and not necessarily how big they can make it to make it more powerful. And CD Projekt Red trying to make Cyberpunk more powerful by offering some up Updates, it was reported that there should have been one that arrived today. Well, according to CD Projekt Red themselves, that came out over the weekend and they were able to update PlayStation, Xbox, PC, as well as Stadia with the hotfix 1.05 of Keynote on the PC is that they fixed these AMD simultaneous multi-threaded issues that were happening for processors that were below six cores, as well as a few other things that were causing some performance issues. And there's not gonna be any more performance issues when it comes to Dragon Ball GT is what it's called. That's what I was trying to remember because Super Baby 2 is coming to Fighter Z. Apparently, the, I found out about this because it was trending on Twitter, Omega Shenron was trending. And I was like, what? Why is this trending? It's because people were upset Omega Shenron didn't get into fighters and Baby did. And now let's talk quickly, lastly, about Amazon's Project Kuiper, which is supposed to be a competitor to SpaceX's Starlink, which is gonna provide internet to everybody using satellites. And they, they unveiled their Cobb band setup for it, which could potentially deliver up speeds up to 400 megabits per second, even on the prototype that they have right now. So they're planning to invest over 10 billion billion dollars in their satellite broadband division. And that is going to be great. Hey, 400 megabits per second. I'll take that. Even if latency isn't that great, that's going to be phenomenal for downloading while you're on the go. And you should take a look at today's video sponsor at the link in the video description. Check out Bookshare Box, potentially get some free bacon for life if you want to sign up before the 24th. So get that order in, make your meat life a little bit greater this holiday season, my friends. And with that being said, I'm gonna leave you. Thanks for watching this episode of Hot News. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.